Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm back. I promise. Uh, my college finals caught up to me, but I'll be back more often now. In this video, I intend to give you a little more guidance when it comes to navigating the very delicate language of C. I really just want to cover some topics that will be necessary to know going forward. Of course, though, I can only teach you so much, and I encourage you to go practice some of this stuff on your own, and have fun with playing around with flex, raylib, and C on your own time. Pointers and arrays. You may have seen these in the past, and it's possible that you still are confused about them. If this helps, I'll give you in my interpretation of them. In any programming language, we have variables, which I'm sure everyone is used to by now. Now, here's a variable called my house, and you can think of it pointing to a value such as a struct. Pointers are very similar to this, but instead of pointing to a value, they're just simply pointing to another variable. To make a pointer, use the same data type with an asterisk after it, and I'll call this p for pointer my house. And we can say it's pointing to the original variable. We can continue to do this, and we just need to add another asterisk for every pointer past that. And realistically, you won't need a pointer pointing to other pointers. It's normally not too common, so you don't need to worry about it. By the way, the ampersand means that we're getting the address of a variable. It tells the pointer where to actually point to. Arrays are very similar. If we make an array of numbers, this is really just a variable that points to the first value, and by indexing that array, like this, we can tell it to point to different values. There's a little more to it, but that's 90% of it. For more in-depth explanations, I'll put some videos in the description. Okay, now on to memory allocation. This here is what makes programming in C and C++ dangerous, and the primary reason for hair loss in developers. You can think of memory allocation like asking to borrow some space from the program. The reason that we might want to use memory allocation is because if we have something and we don't know how big it's going to be before we run the program, we need to borrow some space so we can actually put it somewhere. We have to tell it how many bytes to borrow by using our data type, getting the size of it, and telling how many of that data type we want space for. And once we get that space, we can use it as an array of that data type. Two very important things to mention though. One, notice how I said borrow. When we're done with it, we must call free and pass in the pointer that we got from malloc. And two, you most likely won't need to use this too often using flex, which does most of this automatically. You will still have to remember to call frees um, when they are required though. Everything is an entity. This is mostly for fun, but I have pointed to in the past that everything is really just an entity. I'll show you what I mean. For example, tags are just entities, components are entities under the hood, same with systems. I think the only thing that isn't an entity is a query. This allows flex to be flexible. Speaking about queries, I'll talk about them next. They are the most difficult part, but it's also the last major piece of flex. I'll see you then. Good night.